Well, good evening, everybody. It's good to be here. Um, I've got something on my mind, and I don't know how it's going to come out. And honestly, I don't even know that I will even share this. Um... I've come to a realization today that there's not all that much about me. And what I mean by that is somebody's not going to see a whole lot to talk about um, if something was to ever happen to me. There's not really that many people that really know who I am. Um, a lot of the friends from my early days is really not all that many friends. I mean, I do have a few, but we're none of us close. I, I'm not... Um, super close to much of my family. I mean, as far as conversation every every day or every week or even every month. Um, I guess what I'm saying is I, I don't know if, God forbid, if something was to ever happen to me that there probably a room of 50 people would probably be amazing to me if something was to ever happen to me that I dare say that there would be very many people that would really even remember me or know me. From my school days, I doubt very seriously there would be very many. I'm not super close to any people that would be in the church. I don't necessarily have a, a congregation of my age. Um, I don't have a lot of friends in the church. I, I know a lot of a lot of people, but I mean, far as having friendship, I don't have a lot of people that have friendship. I do have a few. Um, but I would dare say that if something was to ever happen to me, that I'm sure that to some there would be a loss. I'm sure to some people that they would uh, feel a sadness, maybe. Um, I don't have a lot to show for my life when it comes to other people. Um, I have a home. Um, I have property. Um, a lot of that, no doubt, is value, but on the day of my death, the home is no value, the land is no value, the vehicles is no value. I mean, think of anything that you own that the day that you die and you're not around anymore, not even your clothes that is in your dresser drawer is important to you. I'm not saying that if somebody passes away that they automatically get rid of everything that there is of that individual. No, I, I don't know that that would happen, but at the same time, 
you wouldn't just leave it in there. Over a period of time, you would move away the clothes. You would move away the garments on the hangers. Um, if it was any good at all, you would probably donate it. Um, I don't own a lot of clothing. I've got a lot of wore out jeans. Um, I've got probably maybe one or two good pairs of shoes. I don't have a whole lot of value. My wedding band was a, a band I bought in Italy in two, I don't remember what year it is now, 2007 or 2008. I think maybe I bought a, a wedding band when I was in Italy and I still got it. The wedding band, it's not real. I got it from one of them little shops on the street of Venice, which is no value, but it's valuable to me because it's lasted me all this time. So I could go and look at the value of my vehicles and value of my house, but you know, if something was to happen to me, none of that would really be valuable. Again, I don't have a whole lot of friends. Um, I probably maybe would not have enough to tote me to the grave. I'd have to use some of my family probably to get that done. I'm not saying all this because I'm looking forward to dying. That's not the reason why that I'm out here making this kind of video. I guess my conviction is that ever since the Lord saved me, um, today was the first time that I ever seen one of them uh, cards from a funeral of the year that the person was saved. I thought that was really, really good. I think if I had to write up mine, I would do the same thing. I would go one step further. I would list the actual date because I happen to know the date, not to say that the other guy didn't know, but they listed the year. And that's a wonderful thing. Having the year of salvation, when salvation come to you, is a wonderful thing. So, the home, the property, the land, money. Take somebody that passes away and they've got everything that they had pretty much paid off and... Take somebody, take somebody a lot like my friend that we had his funeral today. Everything that he had, he has left it behind. He don't need it in where he's at today. Honestly, he could care less about anything that was here. Now, that's not to say that he doesn't love his wife. I'm sure he does. He loves his daughter and his sons. He loves the children of the marriage and the grandchildren of the marriage and the great-grandchildren of the marriage. You know, if something was to happen to me, the loss of me not having my grandson... I guess would probably be the hardest on his young age. It would be hard for him to accept at five years old. He's old enough now that he knows who I am. 
Um, like I say, I'm not saying this to say poor old me. I don't know what somebody would even say about me. Um, I maybe could ask one or two people to have a comment, but I would have no earthly clue of what they would bring out. I would hope that they would know my life well enough to know the life that I have today. You know, the life that we have today as a elderly person, I'm 62, so a life as the person that I am today is different than the life that I had when I was 30. You know what I mean? It, life is different when you're younger than it is when you're older. So I look back and think that I didn't have all that many friends when I was 30 years old. Our business was not with the public. I was more isolated even at 30 years old. I guess I'm more outgoing today at 62 years old. When I had the nursing home ministry, I had a lot of people that knew me. I had five nursing homes that had several people in each of them nursing homes that would know me. But if I was to go back to most any of them nursing homes today, the likelihood of them being the same people would be slim to none. Some of them maybe would remember me. Some of them wouldn't. Some of them wouldn't know me. Some of them may be dead. These friends, these so-called friends that I have would not be able to come to a funeral service. I would never expect nobody from that era of their age to do anything. I would like to know that they would remember someone that truly cared about them. Somebody that truly cared about their soul. I guess that would mean more to me. The scripture that I'm going to look at is in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I'm going to start with verse 54. It says, So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, talking about death when this corruptible meaning the meaning the body when so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality it's basically talking about the same thing when a person dies from the fleshly side to the spiritual side, when a person passes away, their body transfers into the spiritual side. Even though that person is still got a body, that body is still buried. I've got a, a, a grave plot already in my name, already purchased in my name. Uh, I hope I never have to use it, to be honest with you. I hope I never have to even have anybody to open the ground. I won't know it anyway. But it says here, 
and this mortal shall have put on immortality, talking about the heavenly, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. At the time of death to the person that is saved, death is swallowed up in victory, meaning to the Christian, the Christian has victory. I won't get to see the victory on this side of the grave. I'll see the victory on the other side of the grave, on the death side of the grave, because I will be absent. The Bible tells us I can be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. That's what Corinthians tells us as well. But then it says in verse 55, O death, where is thy sting? You know, we think of a sting. When it uses the word sting, we think of a wasp. But Paul here is saying, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? To a person that is lost, there's no victory in the grave. To a person that is saved, the grave is just a container waiting for the Lord's return. It goes on to say, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Meaning that if I have Jesus, then I have victory when that life comes and my life transfers from this living body to a dead body. Do Am I looking to die today? No. I'm not looking to. Do I want it to be a long, long time away? Yeah. I'd like to be able to play with my grandson a little bit more. But see, I'm not promised that I'm going to get to play with him. Not if something happens to me. But listen to verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Now, that's important right there. That part right there is important. What's going to matter in your life is not the friends you have or not the friends that I have. It's not going to be the money that I have or the money that you have. It's not going to be the vehicles you have. It's not going to be the vehicles that I have. It's not going to be the property that I have and the property that you have. It's not going to be about anything like that because it says here, always abounding in the work of the Lord. The only thing that's going to have never ending benefits is the work of the Lord. Anything that is in the Lord. Now, you try to tell that to a person that is lost, and he'll think you're nuts. But the Bible says here, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Meaning, if my work is in the Lord, then my work is going to abound in the eyes of God. Maybe not in the eyes of the world. So, no, my funeral might not have 50 people there. There might not be a whole lot of people that would even know that I even died or would even care if I die. But, you know, it says abounding in the work of the Lord. You know, I don't know how many things that I actually have that is able to abound in the work of the Lord. I do know My testimony can abound in the work of the Lord for the people that know me. For the few that know me personally, 
can know about my testimony. I give three or four gospel tracts away today. None of them people knew me at all, but I give them a track, give them my card. I did my part to give them out the word of God in case that they did not know. So see, I want to think that was work that abounded in the work of the Lord. Nobody might not ever see it. Nobody might not ever go and say, well, Kenny, that was nice and thank you for doing that. No, it doesn't really matter what people says because there's only one that saw that action and that was God himself. God himself sees the action that I'm doing, the action that I'm taking to make this video. It's not about a church full of people. I didn't have a big uh, crowd. I wouldn't have a big crowd because I didn't know people like other people know people. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm just not the type of person that has a lot of personal acquaintances with people. Do I know people in the nursing home? Yes, I do. Is any of them able to come to a service? No, they're not. Would they miss me if I'm gone? I'm sure that some of them would. But God would know who it is that was touched by my life. It says here, abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. All of my labor of everything that I do, making videos on YouTube, posting them on 47 sites every night, hoping that people will click on the video and watch the video. But see, I don't even have no say in that. I can't tell people to click on the video. I can dump my heart into that video. But that doesn't mean that people's going to watch it. That doesn't mean that if I die tomorrow that there's going to be a pile of people at a local church service that's going to watch me exit. No, my job is to abound in the work of the Lord. That's what I believe the Lord is going to reward me for is abounding in the work of the Lord. So if the videos stays after me, and the videos last five years after I'm gone, is the videos going to help somebody? It's a living testimony of the words that I'm saying today. I could go back a year from now and pull this video up, I won't have no idea who's watched the video. Will the words be true a year from now? Yeah. If I lose my mind in a year from now, is the words that I'm saying today going to be true? Absolutely. Is it only going to be true if I stay faithful? What if I get something wrong with me and I lose my mind altogether? Is the word of God still going to be faithful? Sure it is. The word of God don't change. The Bible says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He changes not. I can go through change, but he doesn't go through change. So it, it doesn't really matter how many people show up for a funeral. It doesn't matter the swelling words that they say. It's actually what I have lived in my own life. It's what I have believed in Christ and about Christ in my life. And that's all that really is going to go with us after this life is over. Abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So see, it doesn't matter how many people come. 
It doesn't really matter about the message. What really matters, what does God think about it? What does God think about it? What is God thinking about this video tonight that I'm making? Does he want me paranoid to worry about what some preacher's going to say about me? No, I would rather be more concerned about what God thinks. Have I abounded in the work of the Lord? For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. That's what it's all about, people. It ain't about the stuff that I own. It's not about how long the video is or how short the video is. It's about what thus saith the Lord. I like to be known for just telling the truth and letting the truth stand. Elderlyministry.com is how you get a hold of me. There's a phone number there on that website. You can look me up and give me a call. See, I leave my phone number every time I make a video. So I'm giving you personal information that you can call me. My phone number was on them gospel tracks that I give away today. If nobody decides to call, it won't be my fault. It'll be on somebody else. You can also go to YouTube. This is YouTube right here. You can go to YouTube and look me up. There's a phone number under the video, and you're welcome to call. If you got anything you want to talk about, by all means, give me a call. This life is going to be over one day. I, do I want to go today? No. Do I need to be ready to go? Yes. I sure do. I hope you're ready. You might have a whole lot more friends than I got. You might have a lot more acquaintances than I got. I don't have very many. I'm more impressed at abounding in the work of the Lord. That's what's going to matter on that day. That's what mattered when we get to heaven, when we take our last breath. That's all that matters is us abounding in the work of the Lord. I hope that you heard what I said tonight. Let me know if there's anything I can do. Be glad to help. Thank y'all for listening.